Welcome to Comic Shop News. I'm Dan and continuing this week the Friday the 13th series review with Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. This is probably my second favorite of the series. Um, I could honestly make an argument for it being number one. Uh, Tom McLaughlin wrote and directed this and he brought his own sense of a reverent humor yet self-referential where it kind of references other movies, other horror icons. Uh, it makes fun of itself a little bit. Um, did the move of actually putting children in danger. Um, Tom Matthews, who some of you will know from Return of the Living Dead, just great as uh, Tommy Jarvis. CJ Graham, uh, probably my top five of people who played Jason. Um, to a degree, I kind of like him more than Kane Hodder, but um, Kane also has said that he really liked what uh, C.J. Graham did. Um, just there, there's humor in this. Um, I know Mike from We Watched a Movie had referenced this thing. It's the Shaun of the Dead of the slashers. Um, I wouldn't go that far, but I... I do like where he kind of went with it in that way of he's trying to say you know like how Shaun the Dead spoofed the zombie genre that this is kind of spoofing the slasher genre which I think Scream probably did that better but this was pre-Scream so anyway start this out um, movie starts with Tommy Jarvis and his mental health institute friend um alan hawes played by horshack from welcome back cotter oh oh mr cotter um anyway um they're on their way to the cemetery and tommy said basically telling him that he needs to make sure that jason can never come back and he wants to destroy his body and he has plans and they go they dig up the body and Tommy starts having a freak out flashback of hearing the Die! Tommy! Die! Tommy, run! And it's playing over and over his head and he, you know, freaks out. And he grabs a gate post and he starts stabbing it into Jason's corpse. Uh, great job with the effects here of showing maggots and all other stuff on their rotting corpse. And... As he's walking away to get his kit, um, gas, matches, and everything else, uh, he throws the uh, hockey mask into the grave. And as he's walking away, a storm has started raining. It hasn't even started raining, but lightning comes down. And hits not once, but twice the post that's in Jason's corpse. And it brings him back to life. And it he attacks Tommy. Hawes comes behind him with a uh, shovel, hits him in the head, breaks it. And Jason just punches through his chest and hit, rips his heart out. Tommy thro throws the gas on him. And you see the maggots kind of sloughing off of the body and just dropping to the ground. And just as Tommy goes to light the match, it starts raining. Basically, it was uh, the heavens giving him his answer. So he does the smart thing and runs off. Heads to the police station. Um, but in between this, though, the genius of Tom McLaughlin in here really kind of having a good time with this. It zooms in the Jason and the hockey mask and then his eye. And as you're showing the eye, they show Jason walking up with the machete, turning and cutting it out of the James Bond openings and blood pouring down. Um, they also, for this movie, got Alice Cooper doing some of the score and, you know, adding tracks to it, which you hear quite a bit of. 
uh, when Tommy goes to the sheriff's office, he runs in. He basically starts ranting about how he accidentally brought Jason back, and he's more powerful than ever. Do something. Jason's alive. He killed my friend, and now he's coming for me. You better cool out, boy. You already almost got your head blown off. Will you listen, damn it? Don't piss me off, Junior. I will repaint this office with your brains. Look, Jason is alive. We dug up his body. I was going to cremate him. Hold it, whoa. What's your name, son? Well, tell me, Jarvis, but look, we've got to do something. He's even more... Uh, the sheriff is a... His name is Sheriff Garris, which is a reference to Mick Garris. Uh, the director so um, little homages here and there and he the the sheriff figure finds out who he is and he's like haven't you been in a mental institute and he goes yeah yeah but I, I brought Jason back and the sheriff's deputy comes in and basically ends up pulling his gun on uh, Tommy after he tried to pull Sheriff Garris's gun they lock him up and they tell him about you know how they renamed the city forest green to basically forget about crystal lake and that monster so as they're locking him up we then cut to darren and elizabeth darren some might notice as the bad guy from ghost and elizabeth is the director's wife um they find jason in the road as they're traveling up in their volkswagen bug and uh, they basically, her boyfriend, Darren, decides to confront him. He gets the spear right into the midsection and flipped. And she starts to run away, falls in a puddle, and she tries to offer him money. And we get the floating MX card in the water, which the director had planned to, you know. So some, there's somebody in the audience who's going to say, don't leave home without it, which is the old slogan of American Express. Uh, we cut back to Tommy in jail waking up, and we meet the, I guess they're the protagonists of the camp. Um, we got Megan, Sissy, Court. Court is awesome. Court is one of my favorite characters in this. Um, and Paula. And he starts telling them, you know, Hey, Jason's out there. Megan instantly is attracted to Tommy. And they tell him that the sheriff's like telling him he needs to get him out of town. He don't feed him to his daughter, you know, his bullshit. And going to run him out of town. And uh, we, all, we cut over to Martin the Gravedigger, who um, is covering up... Horshack's body in Jason's grave and he's kind of having monologue. Who the hell would dig up Jason Voorhees? Shitheads. Couldn't even stick him back in right. Well, I ain't gonna touch this slimy sucker. Why'd I have to go and dig up Jason? Some folks have a strange idea of entertainment. Um, so this comes back a little bit later. Uh, we have the paintball scene, the corporate paintball game, where um, one of the funny nod and wink murders happens with uh, the character Bert rampaging through the woods because he got killed by a woman. And as he's doing it, Jason grabs his arm and looks like he's trying to get the machete away, but throws him straight into a tree and there's a smiley face on it. And then we see the smiley face covered with blood as Bert's body falls away. And Jason's standing there, like didn't know his own strength. He's holding Bert's arm with the machete still in it. Um, he manages to hunt down the other corporate members, um, basically just dismembers them. Uh, we cut back to Sissy, Megan, court paula and they're at the camp and megan starts you know what if jason's still out there wanting revenge and she can only think of one thing scarier and that's the kids pulling up so uh, again i mentioned we have kids in danger this time uh tommy ends up going to the he manages to get away from sheriff garris and goes to where jason was buried to find it filled and he's you know 
trying to question Martin, and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And there's a little nod and wink to the screen again with Martin. Oh, I want to... Why would I leave that graveyard? What do they think I am, a fart head? And it cuts to the kids going, yeah! And we, we got more going on. Um, Court now is taking some of the kids around and teaching them boy scouting. Um, tells this weird story about the Indian stones and how, you know, the man hiding from his squaw. And there's two young kids who are always kind of, they're almost like the comic relief. And they're like, boy, if this is going to be all the fun we have, this is going to be bad. Um, this stuff like that. Um, eventually get to Jason on his way to the camp, kills Martin the Gravedigger, uh, and two other people who are out there having the little picnic out there. And um, Jason is almost to the camp. And we cut to court with this girl, Nikki, he met. And they're banging away in her, her stepdad's RV until the power gets cut and they they get freaked out they get in to they get it going drive off jason's already in the rv and he kills nikki by shoving her head through the metal and then court's driving jamming out to alice cooper's teenage frankenstein and jason takes a dagger and shoves it right in his ear and the RV flips, um, pretty magnificent stunt. And there's a great set piece of Jason on top of the flaming RV that cuts away. Um, he gets to the camp, um, he kills Sissy, pulls her through the window and turns her neck all the way around. Um, we have parts where Jason's walking through the cabin cabins with the kids in them and the one little girl nancy sees him um paul is killed pretty fast um pretty bloody too where the cabin's just completely destroyed uh, and covered with blood tommy ends up back in jail after him and megan go around um they are getting ingredients for his way of how he's going to stop jason uh they're stopped in a speed trap and once again, he's put in jail while Megan's there, basically being watched by the deputy, Rick. They trick him and put him into the jail cell and head to the camp. Uh, there are some grisly murders of the cops. Uh, Sheriff Garris, in particular, after hearing Megan screaming, decides to have a confrontation with Jason and ends up getting his back bent all the way back onto the ground. Um, Pretty great stunt kill. Um, all the cops are knocked off pretty quick. Uh, the two kid, the two boys, they're hiding under the beds. And the one kid turns with, so what did you want to be when you grew up? And the other kid's like, I think we're dead meat. Uh, which, uh, if you watch the Dead Meat channel, um, they, they use that in their podcast openings. Uh, I love that. Tommy and Megan, um, Tommy ends up coming in, getting Megan away from Jason, and he's out on the boat, he's pouring gas into the water, he's got a large boulder and a chain uh, hooked to a collar. Uh, him and Jason have their showdown, uh, apparently you can just insult Jason and get him to chase you by calling him maggot head and stuff like that. He, Jason gets out there, um... They, they have their battle. Megan is watching them fight. She's screaming. The collar finally gets put around Jason's neck, but he's still not all the way down. The motorboat engine ends up, they put it right to his neck, and you see his body start shaking. Uh, and, you know, Tommy and Megan, you know, happily ever after, but... They, they go down into the water and they show Jason and, you know, he's held there by the collar and the chain and the boulder. And they zoom in, his eyes still open. You know, it's, he's not dead, he's not down, he, he's just caged for right now. And we hit the credits and we play the, uh, the Man Behind the Mask by Alice Cooper. Um, 
just really great. It, it's just one of those movies where everything just clicked and worked. Uh, this, I'm going to give a 7.5. Um, could borderline to an 8, depending. I, I go back and forth on it. Just fantastic movie. And again, my second favorite of the Friday the 13th series. Uh, this is a buy, 100%. It, it's a must-fear collection if you have um, Friday the 13th movies or, you know, if, if you want to find that expensive Blu-ray box set, then uh, more power to you, but you're going to be paying close to 500 for it at this point. Uh, you can get the DVDs, though, of the set for about 30 bucks. Uh, that's how I had to buy it. Um, I will own Blu-rays of it all eventually. The Part 4 one is the one that is really hard to find on Blu-ray. Um, that being said, thank you for watching. Uh, Comment, like, share, subscribe. Tell me your thoughts on this movie and why you love it, hate it. Um, I know some people do have problems with Zombie Jason. Um, and the next movie, we are introduced to Kane Hodder as Jason, and I'll be getting to that fairly soon. And, um, yeah, I, th this movie's great. Now, what do you think of C.J. Graham as Jason? Uh, I know some people have mixed reactions to him. Uh, I mean, he is kind of a zombie in this. And thanks for watching. I hope everybody had a happy Friday the 13th. Bye.